So before this video starts, I just want to say in the process of making this video, we got some pretty big news that Sony was buying Bungie. I just want to acknowledge that because I don't really reference it at any point in this video because I made it before that news came out because I never really got a chance to edit and upload the video. So I just want to make sure it's out there. I'm not like ignoring that fact. It's just this video was literally recorded before that news came out. So just keep that in mind as you're watching. And I still think most of the points pretty much still apply to this day. I don't really think much has changed in that regard. I think the video is just as relevant as when I record it because I don't really think this changes too much. While the Bungie acquisition is a pretty big deal, it's not on the scale of really what I was talking about in this video. So I think the video I made, even though it is a little bit out of date at this point, is still pretty relevant to the overall discussion. And I actually do think the Bungie deal was a really smart acquisition by Sony. It fills a major gap in their first party lineup that they've had for a while, ever since they got rid of Killzone and Resistance. So I'm actually kind of happy to see this. I think it's a really good fit for Sony and I'm really excited over the fact that they're keeping their games multi-platform because I'm not really a big advocate for people like removing games from other people's consoles or preventing people from playing video games. So I think it's a really great step in the right direction from Sony, them going in a more multi-platform approach. And I think regardless, we can at least all appreciate the fact that at least a gaming related company purchased this studio instead of it going to something like Tencent or Facebook, for example. So overall, I think it's a really good deal. I just wanted to make sure I added this little disclaimer here. I'm not ignoring the Bungie acquisition. It's just this video was literally created before that acquisition was even announced. So hope that clears it up and enjoy the video guys. Yo, but what's up guys? I hope y'all are having a great day today. Just full of positivity and happiness, dude. <laughs> Because we're going to be talking about a very fun topic here today on the channel, and that of course is the Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition. Now, unless you've literally had zero internet connection up until this point that I'm making this video, you've probably heard by now that Microsoft is acquiring Activision Blizzard for about $69 billion, which I believe is the largest technology acquisition of all time. Not even just in the gaming industry, in all of technology. That's how big of a deal this entire deal is between Microsoft and Activision. Like, this is literally probably one of the biggest pieces of news we will ever get out of gaming. Like, I don't think anything's gonna top this for a very long time, and I really don't think anything probably could in all honesty. I think the only thing that could possibly ever top this is if someone just straight up bought Sony. Which as much as I would love to see that happen to watch PlayStation fanboys collectively lose their shit, I don't really think that's gonna happen anytime soon. But of course, speaking about fanboys, PlayStation fanboys are doing their best to downplay this entire scenario and employ their best methods of damage control that they have at their disposal. I guess this is kind of more of the celebration that they did with Bethesda. It's kind of the promise that there's gonna be exclusives down the road. Here's the thing, here's what they don't, they, they fail to understand, all right? Studios, just acquiring studios, developers or whatnot, does not equate to good games. Just like you having all these degrees does not equate to you getting a high paying job. So have fun with acquiring all of this. Show us something, all right? You still have nothing on your miserable system that can compare to God of War. Your facts are starting to piss me off. Nothing that can even compare to Forbidden West. Fine. I'll do it myself. No! But speaking of Horizon Forbidden West, today we are going to be taking a look at a YouTube video talking just about that and how Horizon Forbidden West is the perfect response by Sony to the Microsoft Activision acquisition. And no, I'm not even fucking joking. Now the title of this video is Sony Responds Perfectly. Sony set to triple down on quality and strategic acquisition as stock drops. Now you might be wondering, what was this perfect response by Sony? that literally makes the Activision Blizzard acquisition by Microsoft look like an absolute nothing burger. Well, I'll tell you guys, they released a story trailer for Horizon Forbidden West. <laughs> that's right, dude. The game we've known about for like two to three years now at this point that's literally gotten like 15 minute gameplay demos. We're getting extremely fucking hype for another rehashed trailer because that's completely comparable to the biggest technology acquisition of all time. Like these PlayStation fanboys, they're absolutely huffing the copium at this point, but I don't really think we need much more of an introduction here, guys. I think we should probably just go ahead and get right into the cancer. So go ahead, sit back, relax, grab a drink, grab some popcorn, bundle up those brain cells, and let's go ahead and play this shit. 
All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check the videos out. I really do appreciate the support. You know what, man? I really do appreciate it because I always look forward to tuning into this absolute quality ass content. We have more PlayStation news and info to go over and discuss in this video. Some really interesting topics. And before we dive into them, do me a big favor, be sure to hit that like button to help this video out. You know what guys, I'm gonna have to ask you to do the same because you know what, ever since I've been on YouTube, I've had a dream, man. I have had a dream that one day I can hit five likes on a YouTube video and today I hope you can make my dream a reality, guys. Please make sure to smash that like button. If you do end up enjoying it or finding it informative, it really helps the videos out more than you know. And if you are new here to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Yeah, also, could you drop a sub as well? The first topic I wanna to discuss with you guys is what I believe to be Sony's immediate response to the announcement yesterday that Microsoft is planning to acquire Activision Blizzard. Yeah, releasing the story trailer for a game that's set to come out in a couple weeks anyway is not really a direct response to the largest video game acquisition in all of human history. Like, I'm telling you guys, these motherfuckers are gonna develop a copium addiction. Like, you guys thought the opioid epidemic was a big deal? Wait till you see the copioid epidemic among PlayStation fanboys. I'm sure everybody is well aware of this news and we know that this is a massive announcement one that's going to shake up the industry and pretty much dominate headlines and considering that fact you think the perfect response from sony is to basically release the 15th trailer for a video game that we've known about for two to three years at this point have gotten extensive gameplay demos of and is set to come out in just a few weeks anyway so they were probably going to drop this trailer with or without the announcement from microsoft so this is the perfect response to literally the largest technology acquisition in all of human history okay dude you know forgive me as i press x to doubt on that one and it's one of these announcements that's so big, there's really nothing else, at least that I can think of off the top of my head, that rivals it. I mean, to be fair, there is really nothing Sony could do to match this type of acquisition other than just straight up buying Nintendo, which would probably never happen. But releasing another trailer for Horizon Forbidden West really isn't anything that's going to get people excited at this point. But something that a lot of people were wondering yesterday is what is Sony planning to do next? What will Sony do in response to this news? Which in this scenario is absolutely nothing. I mean, there's no denying that when we see the headline, Microsoft acquiring Activision Blizzard, for a lot of people, their first thought is, uh-oh, that's bad news for Sony. What's Sony going to do? You know, that does seem like a reasonable thought because all of a sudden the games from the largest third party developer might no longer be on PlayStation. I don't know, man. To me, that seems like a pretty natural response. And I think that's understandable. It is a huge move, but I think Sony did today the best thing that they could have done. No, I mean, the best thing they could have done is come out and show like footage for a new game, like maybe some Spider-Man 2 gameplay. Maybe they announce like, hey, we're looking at possibly acquiring some more studios. They don't have to say which ones, but they could just say, yeah, we're considering it as well. But no, nah, man, the best thing they can do is release the 25th trailer for Horizon. That'll definitely get people hyped. And I think it really was the perfect immediate response. And I want to emphasize the word immediate. Again, I don't really think this was an immediate response. I think this trailer was going to come out regardless of the acquisition or not. They dropped the story trailer for Horizon Forbidden West. Now, this is a three minute long trailer and it just shows a lot more about the game, specifically regarding the story of the game, obviously. Oh my God, dude, I wonder what the game's going to be about. It's not like it's a sequel or anything. I don't know. At this point, I just don't get hyped for video game trailers anymore. I just want to play the game for myself at this point. Like, I really just don't buy into the hype culture anymore. And it just shows how awesome it's gonna be. Well, it is true. PlayStation fanboys do love the story above anything else because it's the only part of the game you don't have to play. And when you look at Horizon Forbidden West, it's a big game. It's gonna be one of the biggest games that drops this year. Is it really though? Cause like in all honesty, I've heard more about Dying Light 2 and Elden Ring than anything surrounding Horizon. I actually forgot it came out this month. Like outside of the PlayStation fanboy circles, I really haven't seen much hype for this game whatsoever. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you want me to possibly pick this game up and stream some of it. That way we can experience the greatness together. And we're less than a month out 
from it dropping. And from where I'm sitting, it looks like it's going to be a masterpiece. Of course it does. It's a PlayStation exclusive and you're a PlayStation fanboy. Who would have seen that coming? But notice how he doesn't even say like, yeah, it looks really good. It looks like a big improvement from the original. He goes straight to masterpiece, bro. Like he already has it in his mind that he's absolutely going to love this game. Like he's already brainwashing himself and convincing himself that it's going to be the greatest game he's ever played. I think Sony knows this. I think anybody who's excited for the game knows this no literally no one knows if this game is going to be a masterpiece or not that's pure fucking speculation so out of all the things that sony could have done today you know the day after microsoft announces a massive acquisition like that this is what they choose to do and i think it's perfect well of course you think it's fucking perfect dude but i think if anything it shows you that sony kind of already has busted their wad bro like they literally announced everything that they have in the pipeline and they really have nothing else to show except this in god of war sony really is letting the games do the talking well if forbidden west is anything like zero dawn there's going to be plenty of fucking talking in that game now i know that there are going to be some playstation fans who think well that's not good enough sony needs to do more well, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But before we move on to the next topic, I just want to say I highly recommend if you have any interest in Horizon Forbidden West at all, you should check this trailer out. This dude just literally needs to put sponsored by Sony in his description at this point. Like, this motherfucker is a full-blown shell. Like, Sony, hook this dude up with a bag, bro. Like, he's doing more advertising than you motherfuckers do. It's an awesome trailer, and I think Sony picked the perfect time to drop it, right? Because, look... Realistically speaking, there's only so much Sony could do as a response to what Microsoft just announced. I mean, they could have shown gameplay for a game that has not previously gotten gameplay, but if anything, that shows you that every single game Sony has coming out besides God of War is probably years away at this point. And when I think of all the different things they could have done, maybe, I don't think anything comes close to just how perfect this is. Of course, dude, because you're a fucking fanboy. No matter what Sony does, you're gonna lap it up and beg for more. But they literally could have just come out with a statement and said, we're aware of the Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition, and we at Sony and PlayStation are evaluating our position in the market and looking at strategic acquisitions ourselves. But at this time, we have no specific actions to share, but look forward to revealing our future plans when the time is right. And in the meantime, we believe that PlayStation has a strong lineup of first party titles like Horizon Forbidden West, which releases in under a month that would have been a much better response to the entire situation not just dropping a fucking story trailer the only response sony really put out to this was saying that they expect microsoft to keep call of duty on playstation which almost made it look like they were begging microsoft not to remove the game hey we're here to just remind you that we have a big triple a game launching in less than a month it's going to be one of the biggest and likely one of the best games that comes out this year, possibly all generation. You actually think this is gonna be one of the biggest games that releases this entire generation? Jesus fucking Christ, man. Here's a new three minute long trailer hyping you up for the story and you know the journey you're going to uh, be taking within this game. To me, it just, it's perfect. So you can let me know what you think about that. And I also do wanna let you know before we move on, cause I almost forgot that what we also learned in this trailer is that there are going to be some other uh, actors that are joining the cast of Horizon Forbidden West. Oh my god, dude, Hollywood celebrities and video games, that's so fucking exciting! Yeah, I'm sorry, bro, who actually fucking cares about that shit? We have Angela Bassett, G will voice Regala, who is one of the primary antagonists within Horizon Forbidden West, but we also have Carrie Ann Moss from The Matrix. I don't really think saying that someone's from The Matrix at this point is something that's gonna get people too excited. She plays Trinity, she is going to be part of this game as well and it seems like she might have a significant role so yeah pretty cool to see that why is that pretty cool to see if anything it just shows you that hollywood celebrities are desperate to regain relevancy by actually coming into video games especially after that wonderful new matrix movie but moving on to the next topic here this is something that a lot of people have been talking about and this is where we're going to kind of get into the conversation of you know what else could Sony be planning to do, if anything, in response, if they are planning to respond at all, any further to this announcement? We see here, reading from Push Square, that Sony stock value loses $20 billion, but will likely recover. It's Just keep in mind, guys, the site that he's reading from is literally called Push Square, which is a massive PlayStation fanboy site. It's the biggest drop since 2008. 
So it says here, Sony's shares have fallen by 13%, which equates to roughly $20 billion since Microsoft announced its plans to acquire Call of Duty publisher Activision for $68 billion. The sharp drop in market value represents Sony's biggest loss since October 2008, removing $20 billion from the company's value in just one day. Just keep that in mind. This dude is claiming that they responded perfectly to Microsoft buying Activision, but their stock still dropped $20 billion in market cap in just one fucking day. Like, that's literally one-eighth of the value of Sony as a company. Oh, and just a fun fact, since this video was uploaded, Sony's stock prices continued a downward trend. However stock value is expected to recover in due course. Yeah, it may recover over time, but no one knows how long that will actually take. But once again, this is a fanboy website, so we can't really expect too much. Of course, this is simply how the stock market reacts to such major news. It always has done, and it likely always will. Interestingly, Microsoft stock value also took a slight hit yesterday. It is, after all, intending on spending $69 billion, and the news has negatively impacted its value too. Yeah, technology stocks in general were down that day, so I really wouldn't look too much into that. Microsoft bought Activision at $95 per share, which when is totaled to $68 billion, means the company paid around 45% above Activision's stock price prior to the announcement. Basically, they paid around Activision's all-time high share price, which is a pretty good deal in all honesty. The share price of Activision was actually drastically undervalued, and when it hit 57 bucks, I was telling motherfuckers to go out and buy that shit on my streams, which hopefully you did, because then you would've made a shit ton of money, but regardless of that, Activision's share price would've gone back up to around that $90 level anyway, because Activision was more profitable than ever before. The thing driving down the share price were the delays of Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4, and also the whole lawsuit surrounding them, which in all honesty had zero effect on their earnings because Activision, even during the peak of the controversy, was more profitable than ever before. So eventually the company's share price would have gone back up. So if anything, Microsoft got a pretty damn good deal. And not to mention it didn't go to fucking Facebook. So I think it's a win-win in this situation. There was positive news for other major publishers. However, shares at Square Enix, Capcom, and Konami all rose by 5% while Ubisoft went up by 11%. Because the market's anticipating that Microsoft's buying spree is nowhere close to over, which in reality, they're probably gonna announce a lot more acquisitions. Perhaps shareholders see the companies as the next potential targets for an acquisition. So, yeah, this is something that I've seen a lot of people talking about. And Gee, I wonder why they're talking about that instead of the Horizon story trailer. And I think people are overreacting here. I mean, there's no doubt that this is not something that Sony as a corporation obviously wants to see. Well, yeah, when you consider the fact that Sony's only legal obligation and only reason for existence is to maximize shareholder wealth, a $20 billion drop in market cap in just one day is not really a good look. You know, if I was a Sony stockholder and I lost 13% of my investment in one day, I'd be pretty fucking pissed. And I think what Push Square is highlighting here is just something that we see time and time again with the stock market. You know? Yeah, when rival companies make big purchases or big acquisitions that could hurt your company, typically your stock price drops. You know, when you see news like this, there are going to be people who, you know, have stock within Sony and they do really believe like, uh oh, this is it. You know, this is where Sony completely falls off track. This is where you know, the beginning of the end. I mean, in a sense it is, because not only did Microsoft buy the largest third-party developer in video games, but it also signifies something else. What we learned from this entire thing is that Facebook was also in talks to acquire Activision Blizzard, which lets us know that a new era is upon us, where the large tech companies are going to start dipping their hands into the video game industry. It may not be Microsoft that picks up the next video game studio. We have Apple, we have Facebook, we have Google, these large tech companies that have tens of billions, if not hundreds of billions of dollars at their disposal that they can just pour into the video game industry and buy up all these third party developers, which would literally price Sony out of the market because Sony cannot compete on a financial level with the likes of Google, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook. Like it would not end well for them. They could literally get priced out of this entire market. Sure, they might have the best selling console, but the way the video game industry is moving, it's moving more towards mobile phones, PC, gaming and video game streaming.
anything. Sony is not very prevalent in any of those categories, so they could literally get pushed out of the market if things continue down this path, which is what a lot of these investors are starting to anticipate, that Sony is eventually going to get priced out of this market. Now, I just want to make it abundantly clear, I'm not saying that the PlayStation's going to fail in the next five years or anything like that. That would be stupid, but long term, what investors are anticipating, it seems like, is that Sony's dominance in the video game industry is not going to be long lasting, and this Microsoft acquisition is just a sign of the times to come. I guess you could say, and it's understandable that some people are going to have that reaction. As I said, this was a huge announcement, but I certainly do believe it's an overreaction, and there's no doubt in my mind that it is going to recover. Yeah, over time, it'll probably recover. We don't know how long that's gonna take, but it shows that people's confidence in Sony is overall waning. That's more of what this signifies at the end of the day. It's not a direct reflection of Sony's financial performance. It's more of a reflection of the loss of optimism around Sony's long-term place in the video game industry. But I do think that there is a positive to this entire situation and i'm saying this from a fan perspective oh this should be fucking great the positive is that this undoubtedly does put some pressure on sony now we could argue how much pressure exactly it puts on sony it puts a ton of pressure on sony because the biggest video game on planet earth and the best-selling playstation game every single year could quite literally be pulled from playstation at any point after this acquisition goes through more people are buying a playstation to play call of duty than any playstation exclusive you know we could sit here and say that oh they're over there and they're sweating and panicking and don't know what to do or we could say that you know this is maybe just kind of nudging them to really think about uh, some new strategies or how they could maybe expand their current strategies and really just kind of brainstorm what they could do to combat this because the reality of the situation is that Sony cannot compete with Microsoft in this area. So they can't really compete with Microsoft in any area. You're talking about the second most valuable company on planet Earth versus a company that's worth double of what Microsoft just paid for one acquisition. Like Microsoft and Sony are not even in the same universe at this point. Microsoft is on a completely different fucking level. And there's really nothing Sony could possibly do if Microsoft just decided we're gonna buy up all the third party developers and pull all their games from places. PlayStation. Like, there's really nothing PlayStation could do to combat that whatsoever. They just don't have the resources. Sony cannot go spend 20, 25, 30 billion dollars, let alone something like 68 or 70 billion dollars. That's just not something Sony can do. So they will have to think about other ways. And I think, you know, when people talk about, hey, you know, Sony has to do this or they need to do that. I think we all need to relax a little bit here. Sony knows what they're doing. They've been doing this for a long time. Granted, we have not seen publishers being bought up like they are right now. And that's why the market's losing confidence in Sony because we're entering this new age where technology companies are making these large acquisitions. Like even though Facebook did not get Activision, it gives you an idea that these bigger tech companies that previously have stayed out of the video game industry are now looking to make that jump. I mean, there are those rumors that Apple's making a video game console now. Do you think Apple would really be the type to buy up game studios and then put their games on everything? And that's the reality that could occur like apple could be like you know what we're releasing a video game console so we're gonna buy take two and make the next grand theft auto exclusive to our brand new console like in a situation like that sony just has to kind of sit there and take it they don't really have large studios that they can leverage against apple's console like microsoft would be able to they could make a deal with apple hey release grand theft auto on the xbox and we'll give you guys call of duty and i will admit that that definitely adds uh as an uncertainty, I guess you could say, to all of this. And that uncertainty is what is affecting the stock price. But if there's one thing that Sony can, I, I think, double and triple down on is what they're currently doing. And in fact, it might be exactly what they plan to do. And it might be the only thing they can do, realistically speaking. I don't even think that's going to help them, bro, because you look at the number of PlayStation 5 consoles sold versus the number of PlayStation 5 exclusive games sold, and the adoption rate of this software, like Demon Souls, Ratchet & Clank, like the two, I guess, next generation titles on the PlayStation 5, they've sold under 2 million copies each. That kind of proves that most people buying a PlayStation 5 are not buying it for those exclusive games, they're buying it for third-party games, and if PlayStation loses enough third-party games, then it's just not going to be a compelling purchase to most people.
you know we talk about them just releasing a new trailer for horizon i mean this is what sony does man they cultivate the talent they grow their studios yeah and when their studios are putting out a game every four to five years it's not really gonna make up for losing a game like call of fucking duty sorry man that just is not gonna cut it the only console manufacturer these days that can actually sell consoles based off of exclusivity is nintendo the playstation and xbox are primarily third-party machines and Guerrilla Games is bigger than they've ever been. And Horizon Forbidden West is a great example of how far they've come. And that's on top of all of the other studios, right? It's not just Guerrilla Games. It's almost all of the studios underneath Sony. They're all growing rapidly. They're all improving and they're all releasing bigger and better games. Again, that's great and everything. It just takes way too long for these games to come out. They don't have the longevity of a third-party multiplayer game. And on top of that, they just don't have the attach rate of something like a Nintendo exclusive does. So they're not the primary reason people are buying the consoles. And that's the issue here with Sony just staying the course. And that is growth, right? It may not be the equivalent of Sony going out there and buying a publisher, but make no mistake, that is growth and that is what has worked for Sony. This is kind of funny because Insomniac literally was already making exclusive games for Sony, so really nothing fucking changed in that regard. Now that's not to say Sony isn't doing some purchasing of their own. We know that they are purchasing studios more now than they ever have, but that's just it. We have to focus on the fact that Sony is out here purchasing individual studios. Because they aren't competing with Microsoft. Microsoft is on a different level. Like a lot of people forget that Sony is literally Microsoft's customer. Like Sony literally pays Microsoft to run their cloud services for them. Like these are not two companies in fierce competition with each other. Studios like Housemark, Bluepoint, Firesprite. They're not out here, you know, looking at publishers. And I know that we talk about this idea, hey, maybe they should consider trying to purchase Square Enix. They should maybe look at Capcom. Guys, I'm gonna tell you now, that's not gonna happen. I could be wrong, but from where I'm sitting, there's just no way Sony's gonna pursue something like that. Yeah, Sony's not really in a place where they wanna do that. They'd rather just pay Square Enix to keep certain games off of Xbox, which is their current strategy, which don't even get me started. I absolutely hate that business practice. Like paying to keep a finished game off of other people's platforms is just so fucking scummy. But I do understand where the fear comes in where you know, even for PlayStation fans, you don't want to continue to see these publishers bought up because the more publishers that are bought up, not by Sony, then the more games that are likely going to be stripped away from the PlayStation platform. That's not only bad for Sony, that's obviously bad for us as well, people who like playing on PlayStation. Agreed, man. In a perfect world, we wouldn't have to deal with fucking exclusivity. I 100% sympathize with that. But at the same time, it's kind of hypocritical when people like you hype up exclusivity all the fucking time. So there's no doubt that Sony will have to do something but I think it's more likely they're going to continue to strategically acquire teams that will fit nicely within the PlayStation Studios family. I think eventually it's going to get to a point where Microsoft is going to have so much leverage they force Game Pass onto PlayStation. Like, I feel like that's Microsoft's dream scenario. They would love to get out of the hardware business and just become a service. I mean, shit, that's the reason they are where they are today. Teams that have a lot of potential for not just a little bit of growth, but a lot of growth over a long period of time. Right? We look at Housemark, we look at Bluepoint. For all we know, in the future, these teams could be just as big, you know, just as prominent as studios like Sucker Punch, Naughty Dog, Santa Monica, Gorilla. We could very well see that. So, while this isn't good news... I don't know, man. For me, it's really good news. I get all of Microsoft's, EA's, Bethesda's, and now Activision's games for $10 a month. I think that's really exciting news. But like, in all honesty, I think you guys should really start pushing for Sony to allow Game Pass on the PlayStation because it's a hell of a fucking deal at this point. Which again, I think that's what Microsoft's endgame is. It does, you know, make me a little bit... Um, eager, I guess you could say, as a fan to see what exactly Sony plans to do next. Because I know in the immediate future, we have games coming. You know, I'm looking forward to Sifu. We got Horizon, GT7. Uh, you know, they have to talk about PlayStation VR 2. But, uh, and we also have God of War Ragnarok, of course, and Forspoken. So we know the immediate future, but I'm very interested to see how all of this may end up influencing Sony's uh, long-term decision making and when they do make future announcements. My guess is what we're going to see very soon is more third-party exclusivity deals with individual games because that's what Sony can afford to do and it's what they've been kind of doing for the past decade or so at this point. You know what they plan to announce and share with us and let us know. So 
yeah, I wanted to be sure to just cover this and talk about it because a lot of you uh, were pointing this out. And, you know, this is what I think of it. I, I wouldn't overreact. I wouldn't, you know, assume that, oh, man, you know, Sony's falling apart. It's far from that. Yeah, I wouldn't really say there's cause for anyone to rush out and go sell your PlayStation 5 or whatever immediately. Like, I think everything will be fine for the foreseeable future. You know, they they knew that this was going to happen the second that it was announced that, you know, Microsoft acquired Activision. And there's a good chance that Sony even knew about that prior. That would actually explain why Sony actually, you know, has so many multiplayer games in development, why they made uh, partnership deals for exclusive games with deviation games. Yo, what multiplayer games does Sony have in develop? Like I have literally heard of fucking none and I've never heard of deviation games in my entire life. But yeah, Sony definitely knew this shit was going to go down. Firewalk, you know, studios that have veteran industry talent that worked on Call of Duty, Halo, uh, Destiny, so on and so forth. So it all kind of makes sense, I guess. But there you go. That's my thoughts on this. We are going to move on to uh, the final topics here. First off, I just want to let you know that Sifu, uh, their official Twitter account, they said excited to share the definitive Sifu game key arts. For yeah, and the rest of this video is literally just a big fat fucking nothing. I don't really think anybody really cares what the cover art of the deluxe edition of Sifu looks like. But yeah, I guess it's there if you want to learn more. But anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this video today. I think the key takeaway here is that Microsoft is just in a different league than Sony at this point, And we're kind of entering in to a turning point in the video game industry where we're probably going to see a lot more consolidation and we're going to see a lot of bigger companies come into the scene like Amazon which I forgot to mention in this video beforehand they're heavily investing into video games and then of course Apple there's the rumors they're making a video game console Facebook had an interest in Activision Blizzard so I assume that's not going to be the last company they have an interest in I mean it's just going to get crazy in all honesty with more of these big tech companies who in the last two years basically exponentially increased their earnings they have more money to play around with than ever before and they're looking at video games as an important investment tool because video games are now the most popular form of entertainment and that's only going to become more true as time progresses because video games are still becoming more and more mainstream by the day and that trend probably isn't going anywhere anytime soon and even look at a company like Facebook that's trying to do the whole fucking metaverse crap like they need 3D modelers they need game developers basically to build those VR environments so everything is shifting more towards technology companies companies needing to invest in game development or video games in general. So I think we're going to see some absolutely crazy acquisitions moving on into the future. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg at this point. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Pretty interested to hear your take on this entire thing. I try not to go too hard with the fucking roast in this video. I kind of just wanted to talk about the overall topic. And I think this video brought up a lot of those points. But anyway, guys, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well you guys are literally the fucking best i really do appreciate all the support guys so thank you all so much for that and i will catch you guys next time